a case study on men who have had hundreds of sexual partners. And I'm having this discussion mostly just because it's interesting psychologically and um, because I have some friends who fall into this category, some close friends who fall into this category. And yeah, so we're gonna get into it. Now what inspired this video was a video by a YouTuber named Uncommon Sense. He's hilarious. He, he had a video he put out, he said, I've been celibate for five years voluntarily. He's a vol cell and he's putting up videos like, these women don't meet my standards, which is fine. And I left a comment in there saying, hey, I've been, um, I had a period, I was voluntarily celibate for about four years in my mid twenties. And um, one of the things that I've noticed for men who have had hundreds or thousands of sexual partners is a lot of the time they were initially rejected by women and have, feel like permanently invalidated and need to validate themselves. And for me, what allowed me to have long, have long periods of celibacy if I want to and not feel the need or like I'm insecure about it is one, having um, great sexual relationships early after puberty and then um, just being chosen by beautiful women and also having a great relationship with my mother. And in that thread, Uncommon Sense, he responded, and yeah, he said, well, I don't think it's just rejection by uh, romantic partners or rejection by women. I think you want to include in that rejection by a mother, which might be true as well. But in that thread, someone else was asking, how do you how many guys do you know who have hundreds of sexual partners? How, why, like, why do you know people who have hundreds of sexual partners? It's not that common, right? I think the top, I don't know what the top one percentile is, like 30, I forget, off the top of my head, like 30 sexual partners or 50 sexual, so if you have 200, it's like off the charts. So why is that? How do I know guys like that? So we're gonna get into it. By the way, welcome in fam, much love Trav here. If you don't know me, I'm an adventurer, an entrepreneur living out here in Oahu, Hawaii. <coughs> and yeah, I like to just vlog. I'm not in this to make a whole lot of money or get the most views. I'm in this for my own um, learning and to connect with people and to develop my storytelling skills. So I don't know how many men I know who have hundreds of sexual partners, but I do know that the two men who have been the best friends, my, my best guy friends I've had in my life, both fall into this category of having hundreds, hundreds of sexual partners. And I'm not going to try not to name them or identify them because they didn't volunteer for me to make this video. I don't know that it really matters or that it's a negative thing for them. Maybe it's a positive thing for them. But there might be many more men than I know who fall into this category, but um, not. I don't, we don't talk about these things, but I know, because I know these guys as good friends, one of them, for instance, says, yeah, when women ask, I usually say like 100, the real number is probably like 250. The other one, I don't know the number, but just <laughs> over the years, I have, I have, I have observed <laughs> is just a many, many partners. Um, and then also through books, so Dan Bilzerian is an example, guys had thousands of partners, and shares his thoughts on it, he says, yeah, I think a lot of it's, I've been rejected. I was rejected by women initially. Like, I wasn't able to get the girls I liked, never liked me, I was humiliated, right? And then, also, I just finished reading Jonathan Goldsmith's book. He is the most interesting man in the world, Dos Equis. And in real life, yeah, he's someone who has hundreds of sexual partners. And he's someone, he said in the book, it's probably because his mom rejected him and he was just constantly seeking validation. So with both of my friends, they both fall into this category. One of them, yeah, he says, I don't think, I think he, he didn't, I think he didn't have his first girlfriend or lose his virginity. Yeah, not until college. So he was a little bit of a late bloomer, all of high school, girls didn't like him, whatever. And then my other buddy, I was close friends with him during high school, and 
he was just he was horny and tried but he was just bad with girls and uh he came back one summer and was like yeah I have a girlfriend and I lost my virgin hooked up with him whatever and we didn't believe him because it's like show us a picture bro like we don't believe you um so you know I watched him be not good with women but he just kept trying so again the point is for me I'm not making this video so you can have hundreds of partners some of you want that some of you don't I don't for me I think it's all about just I just don't care I like I see that there's risks with sex you get might get an STD or a pregnancy or get connected to the wrong person that you don't want so anytime for me it's been borderline I just haven't done it and there's been I wouldn't say so many times but there's been a there's been plenty of times where okay we could have sex maybe this this chick's even spending the night in my bed but I'm like I don't really want to do it I might even I might even be horny and but it's like ah, I just I'd rather not right and I know that I could have so I'm validated but I don't need so, you know, do whatever you want with this. And I know I got comments before like, oh, Trav, you're just arrogant and saying, like, going on and on. And how oh, women pre-selected you and chose. So, they're, it's like, I'm just trying to share a story here. You can think what you want of me. I'm not God's gift to women by any means. But from time to time, beautiful women choose me and like me. And I'd just rather wait for that than... <clears throat> hook up with someone who to me is mediocre either in looks or personality so my two buddies I will say um, both of them really like women I think that's important guys who are have a lot of girlfriends or have a lot of women like them tend from what I see they tend to like women both of these guys also like to please women, they're, they like to <laughs> please women, so they're coming in with that, I don't know if their reputation precedes them or what, but now, um, neither of them use a lot of cold approach, that's not how it happens, one of them, in high school, I saw him try cold approach, it just, you know, didn't work that great for him, but he's just, now both of these guys they're similar builds to me. They're six foot plus. They're lean and muscular. They're not super big, but they're lean and muscular. They're different races and they're charismatic. And how do I, like, why is it that my best friend, guy friends have hundreds of sexual partners? Well, I think part of it is I'm extremely outgoing. I'm unconventional. I'm confident in my world. I'm tall, I'm athletic, and I meet, I'm hyper-social, right? I've got like, I hit the $5,000 Facebook friend cap so many years ago. And that's not to say, oh, I've got so many Facebook. The point is like, I met those people in person. I just meet so many people. And who, we tend to connect with who's similar. So even if I'm not similar in my promiscuity as a man, I'm similar in my best guy friends tend to be tall, handsome, athletic, outgoing, charismatic, adventurous like me. And those are recipes that go well for if you want to have a lot of sexual partners, make it a lot easier. The tall thing I think isn't as, who knows how important, it's slightly important, right? But I think being super charismatic, and outgoing and fun, good vibes is a lot more. So one of them, the question is, okay, to have so many partners, you need to generate a lot of leads, right? Which means you're meeting a lot of women. So there's different ways you can go. I don't know the quality of the partners on all of these if it's always the most beautiful women. Not necessarily, right? So. I mean, there's different things you go for. You go for them, have the most beautiful girlfriend, the most beautiful wife, the most beautiful 
partner, or you could go for quantity, or you could go for both. But if you have quantity, you need to meet a lot of people, so how do you do it? So one of the guys has done it mostly by just working in food service his whole life, being a waiter or bartender, and you meet a lot of people this way, both through people coming to the restaurant and especially uh, co-workers. So he ended up just, okay, well, I mean, he went to a small, uh, well, he ended up hooking up with a lot of his co-workers over the years. But also, you go back to college for him, he went to a college where it was like 75% women, 25% men, and it was a small private school. So him and his friends just ran through the whole school because they could, because that's what he wanted to do, and they could. So um, that added to it also. But again, he's also likes women and um, likes to please them. So nobody's really getting taken advantage of here. He's also not cold approaching. He's he's super funny. He also has background working as an entertainer. I'm not going to say what, because it's like, uh, may identify him too much. Yeah, but he's also, he's an entertainer, waiter, not, uh, never been like super wealthy or good with money. And it's interesting because there's so many things that say like to be good with women, oh, you need to, to be really, really, uh make a lot of money and also that being a server is like a really low status profession well that's not really what I'm observing now this guy also despite this he's had some really high quality long term girlfriends as well so every once in a while he has a girlfriend and stays stays with that girl and one of the reasons though that this guy's been able to rack up a high number though is because he's cheated on his girlfriends, so that's also a reason I don't want to name this guy. Now the other the other friend and this is the one who told me his real number is like two, three hundred also not cold approach um, it's funny because he identifies as a beta he tells me he identifies more as a beta male he's certainly not an alpha male and he's also, he's done it almost entirely online through Tinder. And it's interesting because I've seen his Tinder and it's not crazy. I mean, he's, he's decent looking. I mean, he's, I would say, similar attractiveness to me. He's got a, a nice beard, so that helps. So maybe, maybe facially he looks better than me, but similar body to me um, and it's just kind of a fun normal guy profile and the way he I think he's just real social like he spent a lot of time on there There's, well, one is traveling and two is spending a lot of time so one of the reasons he was able to do it is just lots of travel lots of travel travel the world move places move different places in lots of major cities so he's just getting a lot of fresh looks through dating apps at new markets and his his texting from what I've seen it's it's his goal is to have sex so there's a lot of sexual escalation over the texting and he told me he gets them on the date and like by the third date if they haven't hooked up he'll be like what, what are we doing? Why are we here? What do you want? Sort of conversation to see if it's going to lead to that or not. And yeah, it's just been prolific through Tinder. But again, living in major cities and moving through major cities and um, doing zero cold approach, considering himself a beta male. And yeah, I mean, part of his his thing he does is like plays the ukulele and sings and um, he's also not a high income earner as well he was a little bit outside of college initially he got into um, uh, worked, worked a white collar job made decent money invested it in the markets had a 
achievement, six figure nut, spent it to travel the world and then came back with nothing and then just like earning a low income and just kind of getting by. But this is another one where it doesn't seem to stop. Actually, I would say it's hurt him in relationships because I've observed him since like he wants a longer term relationship, but the women tend to not stay because he's not a provi- in, a, in a space to provide. He's not career oriented enough. So, yeah, he also recently he's meeting people more. He's sort of figuring out this, the social scene more rather than just Tinder. Um, meeting people through dance and events and stuff like that. But, yeah, I mean, a couple things that I think are interesting. And then I'm going to look at some of the other sample, but not high-income earners necessarily. At times broke. Um, Not super buff guys, but fit. Lean and fit. And mostly just socially skilled. Savvy. Um, knows how to connect, make people feel comfortable, connect with people. Both have some kind of entertaining that they do. And both having some kind of late blooming or maybe a desire for, for validation. Then I can expand my sample to look at some of these books. And I, I thought uh, The Most Interesting Man in the World was pretty interesting. Because he also, he, he, a lot of the women, he, women he was hooking up with were kept women. They were, I mean, this is the 60s, 70s. They were married or partnered, and oftentimes they were partnered with top actors, top directors, top accountants, top lawyers, like wealthy people. And he would show up in his garbage truck during the day and smash and leave. So he was the like the pool boy that these women are having an affair with. Now, he maybe had potential. He was an act struggling actor. He's always broke. He's never getting lead roles. He's like an extra or he's a villain a lot of the time. But he's not particularly famous. But he's... Clearly he had something, and I think maybe it's because he's attractive. He wasn't tall. He didn't have money. I mean, sometimes he'd come in <coughs> and have sex with a wife of extremely wealthy people. Well, literally, he shows up in a garbage truck. So I thought that was interesting as well. And um, it also, it seemed like things were just happening to him things would happen to him. He would just talk to people who was who were around him. Right? I mean, this is years before pickup was a thing. But, yeah, and that's something that these guys have in common, is they're not doing a lot of approaching and cold approaching and uh, validating of the women, oh, you're beautiful, and all this. It's not really the game that is being played here. Um, and then the last one is Dan Bilzerian, love him or hate him, a lot of people hate him, and a lot of people will say, oh, all all his models are paid, the women around him are paid for, (coughs) at times that might be true, and to an extent it might be true, but there's a lot of women who, I mean, he was able to do it, right, and again, that came from an insecurity, and he had, yeah, a lot of, a lot of partners, and it's mostly through what he calls setup for his. A lot of them ended up coming through social media, but a lot of it would come through club promoters, clubs. He would have an event or a trip, and he would. I don't know how the money works exactly, but the club promoters. I don't know how the economics of that works because I'm not really around the clubs. I don't know if it works the same as it used to. I think the club promoters 
Yeah, actually, this is what it was. He said in his book, it used to be the club promoters would make money off of how much, basically, alcohol sales. So the women are trying to get the guy to, to drink as much as possible. And he figured this out and he gamed it. And instead of having the club promoters get paid off alcohol sales, he would basically pay the club promoters to bring women. So I don't know if the club promoter is turning around and paying for the women. The women weren't receiving cash. They might have had like access to a yacht, not have to pay for that, whatever. Get to come on the, the jet. So in a sense, they're receiving something. They're not receiving money, but yeah, I think whatever Dan was doing is the hardest to replicate, but also showing there's different ways to do it because all these guys are doing it in different ways. And yeah, I've been able to adapt to different changes in life. So again, I'm just kind of rambling. Let me know what you think in the comments. Maybe there's some insight, especially those of you guys who don't know anyone who's done it might wonder how it's done. And that can give you some ideas. Obviously there's more detail to it, but um, yeah, I mean, beyond being handsome and athletic and charismatic and entertaining, those things are super important. You need to be able to meet a lot of people. So either getting good at dating apps or um, having a social life where you're meeting a lot of people or having a job where you're meeting a lot of people. All of those things can work. And yeah, so hope you find it interesting. I know I did. I don't know if I'm going to keep this video up. And uh, those of you who want help, I've got a little mini course down below and, and also a one on one coaching. So go check it out. Appreciate y'all. Look forward to talking to y'all soon. Peace.